Today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I make what I call a press on crawdad shrimp pattern, really, really simple tie, really durable and super effective. It, it glides through water, real realistic. It's a super awesome fly. I use it a lot for, for smallmouth bass, largemouth bass. I have even caught catfish on this thing. And it's also a great coastal fly. So I tie them on saltwater hooks so that I can use it either way because it represents a shrimp, a crawdad, maybe a, pa a pattern like a crab variation, but super easy to tie. So I'm gonna show you guys what we need. First, we're gonna use marabou of whatever color. I always try to use a UV marabou. I think it does better. Um, I, I, I like it. I am going to use some sparkle dubbing. I'm using a size three must add saltwater hook. I am using an artificial fingernail and it's gonna be one of the smaller ones in the kit. I am also going to use some crystal flash. Okay, so, and one other thing I'm going to use is a dumbbell eye. And I want that dumbbell eye to be a fairly heavy one because I want the sucker to flip over the right way and I want it to be able to bob in into the water. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna secure our hook in the vise. Get that secured in the vise. And I got materials going in every direction. Okay, once we get that secured in the vise, we are going to take and secure our eye dumbbells onto the fly. I'm gonna get a thread base going and cut my tail out. I'm gonna take my dumbbell. What I always do on a dumbbell is I go one way, go the other way, and kind of figure eight. And then I go under and under, under, over the hook, under the eye, over the hook, under the eye. And I'll build this thing up several times. Then back to making a few wraps one way, a few wraps another way. And I want that thing sitting pretty dang good. Then what I always do, is I'm going to take a little bitty drop of super glue and I'm gonna put it on that eye. I want this thing durable, especially on the saltwater version of it. When I'm fishing in the salt, I want this thing to be more durable than the tooth creatures I'm going to be catching with it. I'm going to build that eye up pretty good. Now, super glue is going to tie into that thread. It's going to lock it in pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my marabou and I'm going to pin it together two pieces. I'm going to kind of snip the tail ends off of that. And I'm going to take two of them. I'm going to bring my thread base down. I'm going to take two of them pointed one way. And I'm going to tie them in where they are pointing off one direction. And I'm going to take the next two. I'm going to do that same thing where they're going to go in the other direction. And it's a little bit big and cumbersome now, but when it gets wet, those will look just like claws coming out. So once we get that done, I'm going to come back and I'm going to wrap that in fairly decent. And what I like to do is bring my thread in in between them. Wiggle that feather out. And then come this away and do the same thing to where I actually build that thing to where them pincher claws actually go out and, and, and separate pretty good. So once I get that done, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dangle my thread down 
And I, I, I use several of these probably more than I should, but I like the color of what they attract. Man, they won't come up. But you get four, five, six pieces of flash. And what I've done is I've got the same color flash. It's like this pinkish orange color because what I'm making is basically a shrimp our crawdad pattern i'm gonna i'm kind of making one that's going to be pretty universal so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take those pieces i'm gonna bend it over my thread once i get that bent over my thread man i am part not wanting to get it going all right once i get that over my thread i'm gonna just lock that down pointed towards the back they're gonna mimic antennae and they're also going to mimic the the claws a little bit better and they just kind of stick out there like that and they work really really well for this the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to make a little dubbing loop i want to take my dubber it doesn't have to be a great big one because i am going to add a bunch of dubbing on this thing so when i get that done where do i sit in the box of dubbing at Oh, that's right here in front of me. Thank God it wasn't a snake. I'm going to pick kind of a purplish, pinkish color. And this is a sparkle sh Chanel, um, I mean a sparkle dubbing. And it is a UV dubbing as well. And I'm going to put that in my dubbing loop and I'm going to stack it up uh, kind of long um, and kind of thick. I want this thing buggy. And once I get a little bit on there, I'll spin my dubbing loop. I'm going to kick my thread out of the way and get this dubbing loop spun down a little bit better. And I have it where it is starting to spin pretty good. And now I'm going to take and build that all the way through. All right, once I get that done, I'm going to come over my dubbing loop and lock it in place. Once I have it locked in place, I can cut my dubbing loop completely out of the way. Put this back on top. I'm going to put several loops on top. I'm going to whip finish behind the eyes. Once I get to that point, I'm going to take the dubbing needle, I'm going to kind of poke and pull some of this dubbing where it's pretty crawly. I'll take them great big long ones that come out a little bit too far and just kind of get them out of the way. All right, once I get to that point, the next thing I'm going to do, I always use a gel super glue. This gel super glue is hands down my favorite. It doesn't drip all over the dang place. Now I've got the hook turned with the dumbbells down on the bottom. And I'm going to put a pretty liberal amount of gel super glue. Now this needs to be a gel glue because if you don't use gel that super glue is going to go all over the place and it's going to make a big old mess all right once i get that done i'm going to take my fingernail and this is probably made for a pinky size and i'm going to take the pointy end. Now some of them aren't quite as pointy as this, but this one's a pointy end. And I got these easiest from the dollar store, I think. But I'm going to take the pointy end and put it towards the eye of the hook. 
and I'm going to push that down. And that is going to really, really, really resemble the body of a crayfish or a shrimp or whatever, the, the hard shell of one. I'm going to squeeze that down. Now, gel super glue does take a little bit longer to set, so I have to sit here for just a few minutes. And sometimes I will take, this is Extreme Power Accelerator, and it is any kind of CA glue that you use. You spray that down on your glue, and it, it's done. It dries it up instantly. So once I get that done, what I do is I'll take a Sharpie marker. And I'll just kind of make little dot like ribs. I don't draw complete lines. I just make the dots. And there you have it. And it is pretty easy to fish. You just cast it and throw it back. And when that thing gets wet, those look just like the, the pinchers. You got your antenna. And that's the good shell. Weight it down. Hands down. One of the easiest and fastest crawfish patterns there is to fish. So anyhow, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. And thank you guys for watching.